see uh, what's the state of play with him. Uh, he's going for a scan this afternoon, so I'll have more information tomorrow on his hamstring injury. Um, he's out, and Callum hudson the is out. He had a hamstring problem in training yesterday too. I noticed that um, Jurgen Klopp said you're now title favourites. What, uh, what do you make of that? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure anyone actually really went for it. Um, you know, I think the Liverpool, uh, well, Liverpool, Manchester City seem to be pretty much everyone's favourite. I think when they perform like they have over the last three years, build up the squads they have over three years or four years, whatever. Um, quite rightly so. Um, even with injuries, when you look at Liverpool's squad and the, the team they put out last night and to cover those injuries, they, they had a big squad. Most teams at the top of the Premier League do. Tottenham are in the equation, so are Manchester United, so are others at this point. It's very tight. Is it a mind game from Jürgen? I don't know, but it's, you know, he can have his opinion on whether it is that or not, I don't know. But um, no, I think he's pretty clear. I think where we're at, we're in good form at the moment. And um, But you know, as I keep saying, we have players that have just come in, some younger players, some players that have came into the, the Premier League, some of the teams like Liverpool and City have had a lot of success of very established players in positions that have been performing at really high levels for a long period of output in the in the Premier League so we're trying to to get there and reach that and um, that takes a lot of consistency over the months ahead. It's come to you Matt. Hi Frank. Hi Matt. Um, obviously you've been juggling the squad around really well lately and Lost you there, Matt. Let's come to you, Moose, and we'll come back to Matt. First of all, Frank, can I just say you're, you're winning games now. You're finding ways to win games. Um, like on the weekend when you, you came from behind to beat these. Is that the, most, the biggest positive for you moving forward into what's going to be a very busy schedule? The fact that you, your team now knows how to win games, impressive style, and when maybe they need to be a bit, you know, sort of get their hands there. Yeah, I mean, we had a really nice period of clean sheets and that was a big plus because we knew that that had been a, a slight problem early in the season, but we got some consistency in our play to get clean sheets and then you understand the Premier League is not going to be that. Uh, and against Leeds, we started brilliantly for a few minutes. First action they had, they score. So in retrospect, it was a good test for us. Um, what I was really pleased with the game was that the, the confidence of the team to keep playing and keep playing in the ways we spoke about before the game, keep pressing the way we spoke about before the game and not change the plan. And for me, that's a level of confidence in, in what we're doing. So we must keep that and build on that. Last year, potentially where we were in, in both boxes in certain games, some tension would arise from not scoring. Um, and then tension at the back means we were possible to concede. That's something that hopefully we're getting better at, but that has to be continuously worked on, I think. Well, once again, there'll be fans inside the stadium and, and, and first of all, sense of normality having the bat, but a, a word on, on maybe what we've seen at some other grounds up and down the country where there hasn't been, been respect shown to, to players taking the knee? Yeah, I, I don't want to comment on other clubs, most other than the fact that when we, at Chelsea at the weekend, when players took the knee, which I, I believe is for, for diversity, um, and to, I think we had that message has to be very clear and our fans clapped that message um, in that moment um, so that's just Chelsea Football Club And last one very quickly what are you hoping to get out tomorrow night because you've already won, you're already three you've already won the group what's, what's the real thing you're looking to get out tomorrow night apart from no injuries um, Yeah certainly no injuries and uh, some minutes for people that maybe are not playing as much as they would want in the squad to show that they deserve to play more um, to gain a bit more match fitness I've, you know, after Seville I certainly couldn't complain it was the opposite it was a fantastic performance for, from the, the, the team and, and the squad um, so I just want to see that carry on it's not something I keep saying the same thing it's not something that you can switch on and off the idea that we must win and, and be successful so that's just what I want to see the, the right attitude and how we approach the game Thank you. Thanks Alright Frank I'll try again Cheers Matt um, yeah, it was um, on the back of you saying about getting some players, some minutes, and, and managing the squad. I, I wondered whether you might break from tradition and tell us. I wondered whether Kepa's got a chance to play and, and, and sort of how things are with him at the moment because obviously he's not played in a long time. And when he, we were last talking about him in the team, his confidence seemed a little bit low at the time. Yeah, Kepa starts. Kepa starts. Mm -hmm. And can you just talk about 
what that will mean for him and, and what, what you would like to see from him and where, where do you see his frame of mind at the moment? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I, like I said about the group as a whole, it's about attitude and how we approach the game. Of course, Kepa's um, position is slightly different because the goalkeepers, they have to be uh, patient when they're um, not starting games um, and generally, obviously, with um, Edu's form, um, he's been a very regular pick for me um, easily. But, of course, I think with this game, I think it's a, it's a game for Kepa who's training brilliantly well, um, acting brilliantly well. Um, and I think, and I mentioned when I spoke about him a while ago, that these periods will happen in people, players' careers and sometimes they make you stronger and better at the other end. So I've got no qualms about putting him back in. Cheers. Thanks. Andy? Can't hear you, Andy. Is that, is that better? Gotcha. Okay. Um, I'm going to stick with tradition myself and I'm going to ask two questions in one, um, as I always do. Just I'm going to follow on from, from Matt there and the question about Kepa. Um, and you've said a lot about players that aren't playing, you know, supporting the group and everything. I just wondered if you could tell us how he's been with Mendy, particularly. I mean, as it is, you know, it's not like defenders where you might get a chance to play alongside. It's one or, or sure. the other, isn't it? Um, yeah. But also, I wondered if I could ask you a bit about Timo Werner. Um, he hasn't scored for a few weeks now, and I just, you know, it's obviously not a crisis, but for a player like him, I wonder if you think he's maybe trying a bit too hard. Um, he's got the assists, I've seen, but he's not getting the goals. How much that affects him? Mm. Whether that Germany-Spain game really may have affected him more than you might have thought. Yeah. Um... Your two questions make me forget the first one sometimes. I know, I know it was about Kepa, but <laughs> no, <I'm really> remind, sorry. <laughs> remind me of the detail. I won't forget the second part. The detail, Kepa, um, you want to know how... Sorry, I mean, yeah, how he's been, Kepa, with Edu. Um, very supportive, and I see that. I see it from afar sometimes with goalkeepers. Or other, you know, they, they work together with Hilario a lot. Um, but uh, what I do see, and I, and I obviously watch from afar, and we have, we're in hotels a lot and we have a lot of games at the moment, is someone that's supporting him quietly as 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 is his right someone that's training really well and I think that's the only that's the main thing that I, I look at because the training particularly for goalkeepers because of the one and one nature of it how close they all are there cannot be one goalkeeper that doesn't train at a level they have to push each other and I see that with the group and, and I'm very pleased with that from Kepa so his reaction has been spot on Andy absolutely spot on um, with Timo again I've got no worries about Timo I think he's um, come into this league, he's made a big impact straight away. Um, his speed, direct nature, things he's creating for the team, the fact that he's getting lots of chances, he makes lots of chances through his explosive nature and his eye to be in right areas. And that I love. I've got no worries about him. Timo's going to be a huge player for this club. He scores some goals already. Of course, he'll want to be scoring more and he's missed a couple, but keep getting there, he'll score those goals. I don't think that the Spain game has got anything to do with it Andy I spoke to him after that game and it didn't feel like it was a negative thing that he was going to carry himself there's been a few games since then we played up at Newcastle in the next game and he absolutely ripped on about five occasions that game with the ball and, and was so dangerous even though he didn't get his goal so um, I just think it's a it's a small moment as all strikers have and uh, I've got no worries. And, and just quickly going back to Kepa are you under is there any pressure from the powers that be above because you've got a 70-odd million pound goalkeeper doing, you know, not doing nothing but sitting in mothballs, if you like, at the moment. Is there any pressure that he's not like a liability on the club and they want to try and move him on, get him on loan somewhere and get some money back for him? No, there's no pressure, Andy. And the, the, the pressure is, and I'm not saying that this is being spoken about, is to win games and I have to do the right thing game by game. And of course, uh, Mendy has made himself a very f permanent fixture at this point because the pressure to win games means I pick people in form, goalkeeper, striker, winger, whoever. Um, but at the same time with the game tomorrow, it's obviously an opportunity to give Edu a rest and give Kepper a game. As I say, he's training well, he deserves it. Come to you, James. Hi, Frank. Hi. Uh, uh, tomorrow, maybe a chance for Billy Gilmore to, to start or get minutes. I, I, I just wonder if, like you've mentioned already about the, the incredible strength and depth you've got, particularly in midfield, would you consider letting him go on loan somewhere to, to get more first-team football? Is he someone you want to particularly stay within your group so you can properly bring up the Chelsea way? Yeah, I, I think Billy Billy will start tomorrow. And um, and with Billy, he um, I don't want to have that thought or conversation um, until it would be any point where it would, it would take place. Firstly, when a window opens and it's not open now. I value him a lot in this squad. Um, you say we have a lot of options in midfield. That can quickly change, as we've seen with 
the winger situation at the club, Hakim gets injured at the weekend, Callum gets injured yesterday and um, the numbers are not so great, so um, I'll make those decisions going forward. Come to you, Tony. Hi, Frank. Hi, Tony. Um, I just wanted to get your impression of Kai Havertz, actually, at the moment, how he's doing, how he's progressing after his um, after the COVID thing, because with some people it takes them longer to get that out of their system than others. Um, he got an hour on Saturday. Um, how's he doing in terms of his recovery and the way he's, the way he's fitting in? He's fitting in really well, Tony, and, and I think, I want to be clear, I've sort of said it before, but he had really strong symptoms of COVID. He was very, very ill for, I say very ill, he was ill and struggling for quite a while. And not a lot of the players or all of the players have had it like that. Some have been symptom free. So we had to factor that in and that's why it took, a, you know, two or so weeks before he's starting uh, a game once he returned from, from COVID. Going into when he fell ill or turned in a positive test, his form, I thought, was fantastic. We went off the back of playing some really good stuff, uh, playing in the, the number eight role, the advanced midfield role. And I was delighted for him because you could see he was enjoying it. And obviously, COVID cut that short. Long term, I've got absolutely no worries about Kai. In fact, the opposite. I know he's going to be a huge player for this football club in the Premier League. Um, he has all the attributes. He has all the personality. He has all the attitude. And he's going to be an absolutely top-class player for me in the Premier League and in the world. That's how highly I, I rate him. And, and it must be clear that I think people that analyse, I know it's a very quick reaction sometimes to how people analyse new signings, you know, straight away, price tags, etc. I think um, we have to understand that some players come to this country, some of the best players that have graced the Premier League, found it hard for quite a long time to, to get used to the Premier League. And I think Kai has actually been very good and COVID has made it difficult for him. But... He's going to be a top player for us. He is a top player. Let's finish with you, Jerry. Thanks, Tony. Hi, Frank. You Hi, Jerry. Hi, good. Thanks. Um, I know um, last season, N'Golo Kante struggled to get his form of fitness because he'd had that long sort of injury with France and he didn't really get a good pre-season. And obviously, he's back to his best now. But is there a little concern about Hakim that he might struggle a little bit this season if he's, he hasn't had a great pre-season, he's had the injuries when he arrived. Are you, are you concerned a little bit about how he might pan out this year? Um, I actually wasn't, Jerry, because I thought he was looking great. And he came to us um, quite a while ago now, back end of last season restart, and um, trained a lot. And the injury was obviously disappointing and he missed some weeks, but straight away he, he showed his intensity to work in the gym and on the training pitch as soon as he was back. And I think when he came in, that's why he hit the ground running. Um, I hope this is a minor injury. We'll find out with a scan today. It doesn't. The, the, the feeling he had since the game is that it doesn't feel too bad, which I'm hoping means we can be talking a couple of weeks. But I have to wait for the scan on that one. Um, but I'm not worried too much. I think he's a fit lad. I can manage it around that. We can work him in training. Um, but he's already shown he's going to be an important player for us. But yeah, part of, part of my job in sports science and medical is to try and make sure we, we find a balance to him missing a bit of pre-season, but I'm not completely worried.